Okay, so welcome to the tutorial for Awful but Workable Virtual Reality compatible with Steam VR. I'm making this video because once I got it working myself, I realised the process hadn't been all that hard to pull off and there wasn't a great up to date tutorial for it. In front of me is everything I'm going to need, although maybe not the exact setup either you or me will be using. This is for illustration. You're going to need a Windows computer. I would say VR ready, but if you're going to own a VR ready PC and only play VR like this, something is wrong with you. I get workable frame rates for my i5 and GTX 760, but when I shell out for a higher quality HMD, I'm going to upgrade. You're also going to need a head mount of some kind. Since this is a budget tutorial, I'm using Google Cardboard. I'm taping my phone to my face here, so I'm not entirely sure the quality of the mount matters too much, but if this becomes how you play VR somehow, there are higher quality mounts available for purchase. Thirdly, you need a controller of some kind. Steam VR Home uses a variation of big picture mode, and to my knowledge you can only use it with a controller. I'm using a DualShock 4. Go wired or wireless, I don't care. Steam supports it natively now and doesn't seem to read it well if you're using a wrapper like DS for Windows. Mm. You're also going to need some kind of connectivity between your VR device and your PC. Wireless solutions exist, and if you're interested, leave me a comment and I'll, let, I'll make a video for that as well. I'm going to be using a cable for this tutorial because you probably are too. Got all that? You're not done yet. You only need an Android device too. It needs to fit in your head mount and have a decent resolution. I wouldn't go any older than KitKat era, especially if your device wasn't high end in its day. I'm going to be using OnePlus One. The important thing is that it has motion sensors, including a gyroscope. If you can rotate your screen by tilting the device, you should be good. Once again, if I was some kind of mad person and I could use any device for this, I'd probably choose a Galaxy S8 for its pixel density. When your screen is that close to your eyes, you can see every pixel, and every extra pixel per inch counts. Should we get started? Okay, so despite the fact that nothing is really replaceable here, the most important bit in your toolkit is Trinus VR. It's an app that basically provides the path of sensor information to the computer and video information to the phone. Um, so now I'm going to walk you through the settings that uh, are important to use um, in the application in order to make the stuff happen. Um, so first of all, the most important thing is that Steam VR is selected in capture mode. Um, you, normally it will be set to general which will just uh, broadcast whatever application is in focus to the screen. You need it set to Steam VR. I'm setting image scale to ultra. I'm not sure if this uh, affects anything when you actually click go. Also important on the main page is IPD which is a slider that you will have to set for yourself. I found the best way to set this is to actually wear the, wear the headset and adjust the slider blindly uh, and gently until you're comfortable with, this, with the image you're looking at. Basically what it does is it moves the images towards and away from each other until um, you don't feel like you have to uh, cross your eyes or look around too much just to stop seeing double. So this setting is definitely a comfort setting. There's no right or wrong setting here, you just have to find what you're comfortable with on your own. If you use an NVIDIA GPU, check this box. Moonlight is a secondary streaming protocol that is compatible with the Trinus app. Personally, I've never clicked this box, and I encourage you to find out how much better or worse it is than the standard method yourself. The stuff in the network tab will probably read differently to to, to you, but I, uh, but as long as uh, everything is checked uh, the same, and this is 4.7s and 4.5s, then there's nothing really can go wrong here. Stuff in the video tab is really down to you, um, I guess, preference, but I, I haven't changed anything on this page at all. I have everything on this page set to default. The one thing that you might want to change is to set a hotkey to reset your view. I don't. I think that there seems to be some sort of shortcut of tapping on the screen that that does it. But if you want, if if you like hotkeys and you want to have a hotkey so you can reset your view when it inevitably drifts, it's there. Position tracking. This is. I would call this overkill, and I've never used it before. I don't know whether it just works with. Um, recognizing a camera or whether you have to set it up with um, recognizing some sort of light but from how I'm using this I'm using it as a what what in the Steam VR setup they call a standing only experience where if you move your head in space in, in 3D space I should say um, the world just sort of moves with you there's no you don't actually change your position because there's nothing to uh, detect that um, it seems the options uh, for it are, are, are built into Trinus VR, but I don't use them. I, I feel like if you're going to go into position tracking, you should probably at least get like a, a 
developer kit to Oculus Rift. So the last important tab um, since this tutorial is a Steam VR tutorial is the Steam VR tab. Steam VR does not come installed with Steam, it's an application on the store that you have to download yourself. Um, I'll say it's on the store, it's, it will appear in your library under a certain category, which I'm going to show you now. So the most universal way to open Steam VR across like Steam skins is to hover over library, and if necessary for your skin, right click, and then mouse down to VR. And Steam VR will appear here, and you'll have to install it. Once Steam VR is installed, uh, reopen Trinus and click Install Steam VR Driver. If Steam VR is not installed for a reason, a window will pop up and it will ask you to navigate to this to the install directory, or if it didn't find it. If this is the case and you have definitely installed it, you just need to find the install location of Steam VR. So once that's done, your next step is to connect your Android device to your PC using the USB. You then need to check that Wi-Fi is disabled and open the app. and there should be a USB button and if you tap that you'll be taken to the portable hotspot page and if you tap USB tethering if you make sure Wi-Fi and data are disabled you just get a pass through down that USB cable of nothing but the information required for VR which should give you the least latency so once the hotspot is turned on press the Trinus button on your app and then press it on PC you may have to keep um, pressing both back and forth for a little while to get going uh, you may have to install a tethering driver for your phone to your computer. This may happen automatically. You might just have to wait five minutes from connecting. But eventually, you should have this. Now we're going to start from here for a moment to uh, connect a controller. So this is the button combination you, you can hold down to pair a DualShock 4. I know it's not really relevant for everyone. But if you then navigate to Bluetooth devices on your computer and add a new one, um, then you should be able to pair the controller like that. Um, once that's done, if you c uh, connect it and you have Steam Big Picture open, it should capture the controller and you can set it up properly. My controller is already set up, and so now all there is to do is to press whatever guide button you have in your controller to bring uh, the Steam page up, and then if you press A, uh, straight away you should be able to navigate your library uh, and play any uh, games that you want. Now you can play uh, 2D games in a theatre, or you can uh, play VR games. So that's the tutorial for Awful But Workable Virtual Reality compatible with Steam VR. Thank you for watching.